Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. Uh, by request I fixed the procedural wings so now uh, the early procedural wings do appear in start but the other procedural wings these supersonic ones are in aerodynamics and the other ones are in advanced aerodynamics, so space plane ones. Now you might wonder why didn't I put the supersonic ones in supersonic flight and the space plane ones in hypersonic flight? Well, the reason for that is because the wings are actually easier to make than the engines for these things. So in supersonic flight, you've got a lot of supersonic engines. Those are much more complicated than the actual wings. So I thought it was fair to be able to make the wings first before actually making the engines capable of supersonic flight. And by the same token, the wings for something that uh, can be hypersonic, they're still wings. Uh, so it's just a small advance, really, for space plane wings. Uh, hypersonic flight, especially sustained hypersonic flight, uh, instead of just gliding back down from orbit, is very difficult. So... Yeah, that's why I placed them the way they are. And I also fixed the Mars orbit contract that was befuddling. Uh, so now we have a moon orbit contract here and a Mars orbit. What happened was I had uh, accidentally saved the Mars, while I was typing up the Mars orbit contract, saved it over the moon contract instead of saving it as its own separate file. But then I finished up the file. I uh, had a separate Mars orbit contract file, but I didn't realize that I initially quickly saved over the Moon one because I was t uh, editing the Moon one to make the Mars one. I, Whenever I press period to end a sentence, I just automatically do Control S. This is normally a good instinct, but it turns out that it wasn't a good instinct in this case. So that's what happened there. All right, so that is version 0.1.7 of RP2000 that's already on the GitHub. And we can proceed with what we are supposed to do, which is to launch two missions to Mars to fulfill the Mars contract for a stationary orbit around Mars. And then we'll try the crude lunar flyby. Okay, so 129 days. We will, we could build something else in the meantime. Maybe, we, I mean, we're going to get into Mars orbit anyway, right? That's just part of it, because, I mean, we've got that satellite contract. Assuming it works, wherever that is. Satellites. So I guess we can get the Mars orbit contract as well. And these are repeater contracts could do Lunar Impactor again. This one doesn't require smacking at high speed. So we could technically do the Moon Orbit one too. <laughs> Let's just uh, enjoy the money. Yep, I think I'll take the Moon Orbit and this Lunar Impactor. And we're going to, in the second slot, build something to satisfy those. So, just Moon Orbiter and then smack into the Moon. Not super complicated. Uh, we just had that one sat this docking test we can probably modify. Now, we're not constrained by 40 tons anymore. We can just straight up increase the size of this tank. Maybe... We don't need to push that that much. Okay, that looks good enough to me. So this is... Moon bonus impact. So I guess we'll be doing that before. The, uh, I, uh, yeah, I guess we're going to be waiting on the Mars things for a little bit while we build that and launch it. But that's not to waste time. It's 2011. Time's wasting. Oh, we need to do science. Uh-oh. Roll back. I haven't added deorbit, ma uh, demagic orbital science yet. Hmm, maybe I should try that. I'm getting tired of the thermometer, barometer, and gravioli. 
or whatever they call it. And there's no point smacking goo into the surface. Okay, yes. I'm going to quit out, add the magic orbital science and see if that gives us something new. Or maybe all that stuff is later in the tech tree, I'm not sure. Let's see. Okay, let's see about the sciences now. Well, there's that orbital telescope thing. That's good. Maybe there's hope for us. The submersible one we're not doing. <laughs> okay, let's let's see. Let's bring it in then. Okay, well, we've got an orbital telescope to log visual observations. Whoa, that's big though. I know these instruments, magnetometer, RPWS, all good stuff. Let's, we can go with just two solar panels, I'm sure. Oh, that yellow thing sort of... Okay, let's reverse the order of these two. Okay, alright. That should be balanced. We just sort of need a fairing. I guess we can just go with this diameter for starters. Five minutes. Don't we have a vacuum one of that? We probably didn't when I first made the rocket. Okay, we've we've got an egg rocket. <laughs> An exciting rocket, if you will. But with the new instruments, its delta V has gone down quite a bit. Hmm. Maybe we can use a little bit more powerful an engine and make that stage a little bigger to be more efficient. Well, we don't have to make it that big. We can increase the utilization. Okay, we will try that. And we'll save it and save it at spat. We'll need another 26 days, it looks like. Okay, finally, our little filler mission is ready to go. Okay, throttle up. SAS is on. Ignition. Oh, wait. We're not going at the right time. Ah! <laughs> Where is the moon? Uh, it's awkward. I'm in such a rush because I want to get to the more interesting missions. Okay, well, we are correcting some of the inclination. We'll see what we can do on the launch here. Okay, staging. And I just want the fairing there. Okay, fairing. Managed to get it down to about 12 degrees. Might not be the best thing. We'd rather actually push the ascending node further away <laughs> from the moon. If we had the ascending node over there, it'd be better. Let's see. Um, yeah, I think we probably should have just launched normally. We get the ascending node in the right place. Oh well, yeah, we should have just taken the off-plane transfer without trying to correct it all. Ah, I didn't put RCS on this stage, but we do need to reignite it too. Well, we haven't done these around Earth either. Okay, 3.6, very modest. So it's not crazy amounts. I do like Kerbalism's science thing. The only problem with it is its radiation thing. I'd use Kerbalism, but the radiation thing is very limiting as far as our capabilities are concerned. The way we can shield from radiation seems like we're not going past Mars with 
crew. So, okay, that's an orbit. It's not great orbit, but it's an orbit. And we have 4,500 left, which should be enough to transfer and capture. But we need an off-plane transfer. Well, we don't want to smack into it yet. Game did a little bit fast, but I don't think it'll hurt our ability to capture much. Let's see. We don't have too much choice on that. It's an off-plane transfer. We get there when we get there. Yeah, that should be okay. We have a transfer, but we don't have any RCS here, so we're just gonna have to light the engine and turn like that. If we need to settle it, we'll use the upper RCS, but I think it'll be alright. Maybe not. It's, it's not a pressure-fed engine. Okay, on we go. Nothing new. Still above water. Alright, staging. Now it's looking like a proper probe with stuff sticking out. I do like the magic orbital science. Serious time passing music we've got here. E okay. I guess that's as close as we're getting there. Mid-course correction. I mean, I don't. They're not gonna be in communication right there. But maybe we can figure it out a little bit earlier. All right, let's go quickly. Such a nice-looking probe now that we have the magnetometer boom and the RPWS and everything. Can't trust the power, though. <laughs> KSB Interstellar and whatever it does. Oh, 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 I passed it a little bit. Okay. <laughs> we'll take it. We're probably just turning to the sun is going to change that anyway. On we go. Ignore the lack of electric charge. It's fine. It's hibernating. Okay, well that would crash us into the surface. What was the requirement? Not the impactor part. Uh, periapsis between 20 kilometers and 5,000 kilometers, but in orbit. So I mean like we would already fulfill that. Okay, science time. But first let's point out the node. Nine science with the orbital telescope. Thirteen point five with the RPWS. And seven point five with the magnetometer. Still very modest, so I don't think adding these will be horrible. Okay, we are capturing. Okay, good enough. Alright, we have made orbit. It is happy. Well, we just have to impact. Okay, we are gonna smack. We're not gonna smack in accordance with the speeds that would be necessary in RP1, but we're still gonna smack into it. So we're probably gonna get low over science. Oh, we, uh, we don't have any probe control because we lost power again. But this time, well, at least at least Mechjab totally ignores that. <laughs> okay. Let's uh, make Mechjab very decisively point at the sun while we're at it, huh? Our camera is pointed right at the moon, so that's good. Okay, now we're in space just above the moon's Oceanus Procularum. So, 7.2. And that's just near the moon, so not biome dependence. And near the moon as well. Okay, we've sent home extra science. Okay, and smack. smack. Okay. 
He's so wrong if it bounced at that point and denied us the contract. Not catastrophic failure. Stunning success. Okay, hopefully we don't get any more impactor contracts. Okay, no more no more of those, right? Okay, yeah. It's done with the lunar impactors. And orbit. No, uh, this one's repeater. We can do that two times. Maybe I should change that because as, as I have been told, it might be too easy. But you know, we do need a lot of money to speed up our tech development, so... Okay, 0.6 we'll save for now. Okay, now we're close enough to the Mars window where I'll consider rolling out one of them. Launching for Mars to get into a particular orbit around Mars and potentially investigate Deimos and Phobos. Now these do not have the nicer instruments, the the D magic orbital science instruments, so that's a little bit sad, but we'll save that for later. Now I'll still line up with the moon as a proxy for the orbital plane of Mars. And sure enough, it's a nighttime launch. SAS on, throttle up, ignition, we have three engines, and go. To Mars. Yeah, I need to figure out how to get the clouds like this over in JNSQ, because right now the clouds there don't look quite right, even though it has environmental visual enhancements and everything. Okay, staging. Alright, okay, fairings. Whoa, something just flew by. Something just flew by. It was part of us. How did it go faster than us, though? Hmm. That's suspicious. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's from this Odyssey Mars mission, and it went ahead of us. How? That seems like a buggy thing. I don't like that. Okay, we've shift, uh, shut that off so that we can just complete over it with this. Ooh, the camera flip made me think that the whole thing was going out of control. Alright, we are in orbit. Oh, Japanese HTV. Well, that's no fun. You can't turn it into a pizza slice. Okay, ASAP, create node, no problems, 3,600. We'll have tons of fuel to make orbit and get into the right orbit around Mars. Tons, I say, game. How power will work out, hopefully it'll be okay. Maybe for the other one I should put the extendable solar panels on. But they aren't tracking, so that's a little bit down, uh, a little bit of a downer. Okay, go! Okay... Oh, oh, we're too far, too far. Ah... Uh, okay. Well, we're gonna have to make a correction anyway. Okay, so we'll have a correction of 178, but we're supposed to get into that blue line orbit. So we might as well line up with that first. I mean, that's pretty close already. Uh, is it going around the right way? No, it's not. It's going around the opposite direction. Ah. Uh, okay. Well, that's reasonably in line. That's pretty close to Mars. The problem is, since we do have to go around this way, are, is that going to be in communication with Earth? That I don't know yet. But we do have to go around that way, so we have no choice. So we will see. And I guess we're supposed to be directly over that location, so that's another issue. It's not going to be an easy orbit to get into, and it's not super helpful for getting to Phobos or Deimos, but we do have also another shot with it. So, okay, but we need to make sure that this gets power. Now we'll add the alarm for the maneuver, but the maneuver has probably changed just by us turning like that. And we'll have to see about the power. 
Right now we're netting 60 watts, which is pretty good. But at Mars, we definitely won't be. Okay, so that's one. Let's try the second one. But maybe we should put the extendable solar panels on the second one. I think that would be a good idea. So let's edit that. Okay, I, I was thinking of putting the other instruments, but I think we'll just keep this simple for this one still. We'll send the more complicated instruments later. Well, lining up with the moon again, that worked fine for it all to be on the previous one. Okay, lined up, SAS on, follow up, and ignition. And launch. Okay, staging. And fairings. Maybe a little bit early for fairings. Okay. Alright, dumping the stage again. But I'll wait till Apoapsis before doing anything more. Okay, we are in orbit. And we will plot. Okay, about the same deal. Okay, ignition. Okay, well, a mere 10 meter per second correction on this one. So, yeah, we're in good shape here. Though, of course, once I turn to face the sun, it's going to be all over the place. Because of the little lunar orbit slash impactor combination mission, we didn't get to the crude lunar flyby, though that deserves its own thing at the start of another session. Now, the crude lunar flyby is just... Uh, a test for now. We, we aren't putting any crew in yet, but you know, even then it's sufficiently momentous. It's like practical, practically Artemis 1 over here. So. Okay, so our probe is on its, is on its way. Well, we've got two of them on their way. Hopefully one of them will work. And yeah, so that's the Mars orbit contract and we just got that one. But I do want to test as many of the contracts as possible, as soon as possible, we're trying to get through them. And my goal here is to make sure that everything works smoothly. It might be too easy for people, but first of all, let's make sure that nobody gets bogged down anywhere or there's any th impassable point in RP2000. And then we could uh, increase the difficulty by adjusting the payouts of the contracts and stuff like that. Uh, for now, it's more important that everybody can actually do what they want to do in the career mode. So I'm testing that, that everything can actually work out.